we're going to be going through some stretches that are going to help alleviate any tension you're feeling in your lower lumbar spine, your sacrum, your sitting bone. The reason why we have low back pain is because so much of our day is spent in a sitting position. We sit to eat breakfast, we sit to go to work, we sit at work, we sit to come home from work, we sit to eat dinner, we sit to watch TV. All that repetitive and prolonged sitting puts a tremendous amount of strain on your back. And what I want to show you with these stretches is exercises to help get that back out of the seated position build that stability that it needs, and then teach you those methods of making sitting a little bit easier for you during the day. So let's get started. So I want you guys to come and lie down on your back, keeping the knees bent like this. And in this position, I want you to put your hands on the front of your hip and press your feet flat into the ground. Take a nice deep breath, inhale here, exhale out through your mouth. Clear your mind. A few more breaths right here, in through your nose for four seconds. Exhale out through your mouth for eight. Two more times, inhale through your nose. Exhale out through your mouth. Last one in. And exhale out. Now when you're on your back, you want to make sure that your low back isn't arching. So press your back firmly into the mat so it's in one straight line. From here, we're going to do something called pelvic tilt. So holding on to your hips here, you're going to rock your pelvis up towards you. So these pelvic rolls are a really great way to lubricate the lumbosacral spine, the sitting bone, your pelvis. This helps get out of that seated position that the back is in all day. So pelvic tilts are a really great exercise for you to do when you're sitting in your chair, lying down, to rock that lower back. Good. Two more times, last one here. Now from here, we're gonna lift that back and butt up as high as you can. You can clasp your hands underneath you to give you more of leverage. Lift up that chest here, press your hands firmly down into the mat. Feet are pressed firmly into the mat. If this is really challenging or painful for you, you can just go halfway or you can place a block underneath your back like this and keep your body in this position. But I want you to try to not use that support as you extend the low back, going into a bridging position like this. Not only are you strengthening your back like here, but you're also stretching out the front of the thigh. So you should be feeling a really great stretch in your thighs right here, in your hip flexors. And one deep breath, more inhale here. Exhale, come back down. Good, let's do that a few more times. So lift the body and back up. Hold here. Keep that belly button tucked in. Exhale, back down. Avoid any pinching or pain when you go up. If there is, back off and then just go a little bit or don't hold just go up and down if you need to as your back gets stronger you'll be able to just hold it up at the top eventually go higher with each time and back down and one more bridging all the way up hands wherever they're most comfortable for you holding the hip underneath you, and back down. Good. Let's hug both knees into the chest right here. Now, if this is too much of a stretch for you, you can just hold your knees at the top here and still get a good stretch in your whole back. Now, hugging the knees into your chest stretches your buttocks, 
stretches your back, stretches all those muscles you sit on all day long. This should feel really good. From here, bring those knees back and let's do hip circles in this position, making sure you're keeping your back flat. I don't want your back to rotate. So you're going clockwise right now to the left, making those circles larger with each repetition and reverse. Now do hip circles in the other direction. Nice and slow, eventually making them bigger and bigger, keeping the bat flat on the mat. Make sure it doesn't pick up and bring your feet back down. Now in this position, what I want you to do is swing both the left knees to the right, drop them to the ground, get a really good stretch on the left hip, the left torso, left side of your back. This should feel really good. Come on up, switch other sides, drop both your knees to the left. Now normally your head would turn in the opposite direction that your knees are. I'm looking at the camera. Feel good stretch through the right hips, right IT band, right torso. Come back to center. Now we're gonna pick up the speed with these lower trunk rotations, gently rocking the hips side to side like this. This is a really great way to lubricate the joint when you get up in the morning before you get out of bed, when you get out of the car at the end of the night, or when you're in bed at night. Trunk rotations really help stretch out the hip, the back, this should feel really good. See if one side is tighter than the other. If it is, you can just hold it a little bit more on that side and come back to center. Good. Now from here, keeping your hip and torso flat on the ground. So again, let's do that pelvic tilt, keeping your body in one neutral position. You're gonna lift up that right leg back down, tapping your foot to the ground. And then lift the left leg up in the air, back down. So not only are you doing the pelvic tilt and holding it there actively, you're also marching with your legs as your belly button stays tucked in, your back is firmly pressed to the ground, your core is engaged, and you're strengthening your lower body, your core, as you do these supine marching. This is a really great exercise for building core stability right here. We'll pretend you're in a marching band, but because you're not moving your body, you're only picking up the leg, it's a core stability exercise. Core stability means that you're keeping your core immobile. You're not moving it at all, as you move the arms or the legs, or both. Last round. And relax. From here, we're gonna add the arms. Actually, let's modify that. Bring your feet up in this position here. Bring your hands up shoulder level. What you're gonna do in this position, again, go back to that pelvic tilt, Make sure your body isn't moving. You're gonna straighten the left leg and the right arm goes above you. Come back to center. Straighten the right leg and the left arm goes above you. Come back to center. This is called the dead bug, or technically called the dying bug. What this does, core stability, keep that core engaged as you're moving the arms and legs away from your body. Now, if this is really hard for you, it's because it's a coordination exercise. So what I want you to do, if it's challenging, put your hands on the knees and then opposite. Actually, that's actually a little bit harder for me. <laughs> All right, so actually, if you have, you know what? Keep the hands on the body and then just straighten one leg and go up if it's hard for you. 
and then straighten the other leg and then go up. It is a little bit harder for you to do the leg first and then the arm first, but it teaches you the coordination until eventually the arms don't need to touch the leg and you can straighten the opposite hand and leg like that. Whew. Dying bugs really know how to stay coordinated, huh? Good. Keep that back flat. Make sure it doesn't round. Two more times. Last one. Hug the knees into the chest. Dying bugs are very challenging to do because of the coordination, but they're one of the most effective core stability exercises for low back pain. From here, we're gonna do spinal roll-ups. So cross your right ankle over your left. You can grab the front of the knees or you can grab the back, whichever one is more comfortable for you. Initially, you're just gonna rock your body, your knees up towards the chest a few times until you're ready to do a full spinal roll up into sitting. Slowly go back down and come back up. Spinal roll ups are a really great way to massage the spine. One vertebrae at a time. Rocking your body. Keep that belly button engaged. Coming back up into a nice flat spine. Two more times. And you'll see with these rollers, you go higher up toward the mat. Good. And from here, let's sit back. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a balancing table position. And from here, make sure that your wrists and shoulders are in line with each other, your knees and hips are in line with each other. For back pain or to strengthen your back, one of the best things for you to do is something called spinal segmentation in the form of a cat-cow. Now, in a typical yoga flow, you do cat-cow really quickly, going back and forth between the two of them. Not in this video. I want you to look at it from a PT perspective. You're gonna start and end each motion with the low back, not the neck. So when you arch your back up, this is called the cat. When you round your back, this is called the cow. And then each motion, and you're gonna start from the lumbar spine. So we're gonna do the cat first. As you inhale, start to arch your low back. One vertebrae at a time as you arch up your shoulder blades, your neck, all the way up. And then exhale, starting from the low back, cow rounding the spine one vertebrae at a time until you tuck your chin into your chest that's one let's do four more roll back arching one vertebrae up shoulder blade upper shoulders neck head exhale as you round the lumbar spine round the thoracic spine round the shoulders round the chin to your chest Good. Inhale as you come up. Slowly pretend you're building and putting one bone on top of each other as you arch up. And then as you round the back, one bone is rounding down. So visualize it in your head. Allow your breath to guide you. Inhaling as you do the cat. Look up. Exhale as you cow, rounding the entire spine. This should feel really good. Last cow right here. Round the back, arch, I'm sorry, look up. And round the back, starting with the lumbar spine. Tuck that chin into your chest. Stay right here. Take a nice deep breath, inhale. And exhale, extended child's pose. Flip those palms up, hands to the ground, forehead to the ground. Child's pose is a really great stretch for the spine because you're actually lubricating and massaging it. You're opening up the spaces between each disc. If you want, you can put your arms in front of you for a deeper stretching underneath the shoulder blade. If this bothers your shoulders, 
but still want that upper body stretch, put a block in front of you and hold that. So child's pose again. Initially, we're gonna have your arms straight in the center. Now, move your hands to the right. So it's a side bend stretch to the right. And you're stretching the left shoulder blade, the left torso, the left spine. This should feel really good as you're stretching the left side of your body. Come back to center. And then you're gonna walk your hands over to the left. Do a child's pose on the right. Get a good stretch to the right side of your body, shoulder blade, torso, hips. Come back to center. Let's go back into the balancing table pose. From here, what I want you to do is bring your right foot between your hands and tuck that left, that back toe, pick up that knee and shift it back a little bit. Now in this position, you can see that my hips are in line with each other. You should be getting a good stretch through your right buttocks right over here. If you stay in this position, if this is challenging for you, grab that block and put it underneath your left hand right here. I want those shoulders to be down. And when you're doing a roll lunge like this, you're getting a really good stretch, not just through the front buttocks and the front hamstrings, but that back hip flexors, the front of the thigh. Use your breath to breathe into any tension you're feeling. This should feel really good. And again, that entire spine is in one straight line. The shoulders are away from the ears. From here, you can either get rid of the block or keep it there. Bring both hands inside the right leg and palm is flat on the ground. You're gonna lift that left arm up towards the ceiling, pressing down through the right palm, the right foot, as you're looking up to the left, or if it's too much for you, just look straight. Get a really good stretch through the front leg right here. And again, if this is too much for you, use that block to push yourself up. If that hand doesn't go up, you can keep it on your hip. The whole point of this is to not strain your upper body as you're stretching your low back. Good. Get rid of the block. Bring that left leg back. Let's do an extended child's pose. Get out of that position. Whew, buns on fire. You can massage it a little bit. Feels good. I'm feeling what you're feeling. Now we're gonna do all that on the other side. So start in balancing table. Left foot comes between your hands and you're gonna tuck that back toe, straighten the knee, and then shift it back a little bit more. That allows your entire body to be in one straight line. Again, if you need that block on the inside of the left foot, stay here. Keep the body nice and tall. Sit a little bit deeper with the hip. Make sure the shoulders don't shrug up. I don't want your hands up here, because I want you to focus on Keeping your body in one straight line, hands in line with the foot. Good. Now we're going to do this side lunge twist. So both hands come inside the left foot and again, palms flat on the ground. And if you need that block, keep it there. I would rather you get rid of that tension in your upper body. Palm flat on the ground. Right arm goes up towards the ceiling. Sit a little bit deeper as you look up, if comfortable. If not, look forward or just have your hand on the hip like here. Get a really good stretch through the left buttock, left hamstring, and the front of the right thigh right here. Whew. Maybe you're breaking up the sweat like I am too. Good, come back down. Get rid of the block. 
Let's go back into extended child's pose. Stretch out the body. Relax. Now again, if you feel like when you did one stretch compared to the other side and you felt that tension on the right side, when you're doing the extended child's pose, you can go right ahead and do it to the side if you want to get rid of any tension on one side more than the other. The important point is that you use child's pose as a way to slow down your breath. Good. Take a nice deep breath. Inhale. And exhale as you come back up into a sitting position. <sighs> All right. Now, if you can, press both feet together like this. If this is challenging for you, you can have the feet further away from your body. And if you want, you can put a block underneath your knees. What I want to do in this position is to get an adductor and groin stretch. The reason why is because when you sit, the inside of your thigh becomes very tight. The tighter your groin, the more it can contribute to low back pain. So sit up nice and tall. If it's easy for you, grab your toes. If not, you can just put the hands behind you as you open up those knees down to the ground. Get a nice good stretch in front of the thigh. Take a nice deep breath. Inhale with a tall spine. Exhale, relax. A few more breaths right here. Take a nice deep breath. Inhale. See how your spine goes taller. Exhale, relax through your mouth. Two more times. Inhale. And exhale. Last breath in through your nose. Four seconds. Exhale out through your mouth. Now, we're going to go back on your back. Back on the back. We're going to do a very important stretch called the hamstring stretch. And your hamstring is both a back muscle and a knee muscle. And most people like to stretch their hamstring, which is this muscle in the back of the thigh, standing with the foot up in the air. I'm not a fan of that stretch because your back is a, your hamstring is a back muscle. So you want to stabilize it at its origin. So on your back, we're going to stretch your right hamstring. You're going to bring that knee to your chest and you're going to grab the back of that right thigh with your hands. In this position, just bring your foot up towards the ceiling. Now, if you can straighten the knee all the way, great. If not, that's okay. Keep it a nice straight bend in the knee. Pull that knee in towards your chest a little bit more. Go deeper into the stretch right here, into the back of the knee, back of the thigh. Now, depending on what you've been doing today, you might feel the stretch more at the knee. Other times it might be higher up the leg. It's all one muscle. Your hamstring starts in your low back, right at L4, L5, travels down the buttock. The entire back of your thigh is all three branches of a hamstring and it attaches below the knee. So, doing the stretch, you can see why it's so important. With each inhale, that knee comes closer to your chest. You can keep that knee bent if you want. Totally fine. If it's shaking a little bit, back off. Shaking just means that your leg is weak. So doing this stretch brings awareness to your body. Where it's tight, where it's weak. And taking care of yourself with these exercises to help. Get rid of whatever you're feeling. Uh, that's enough for the right side. Drop that right foot down to the ground. Bring your left knee into your chest. Grab the back of the left thigh with your hand and straighten that leg as far as comfortable. Doesn't have to go all the way. You might notice that one side is tighter than the other and that usually is the case because we're dominant on one side. We use one side more the other side gets neglected. So if you're feeling more tightness, you can do foot circles. You can rock your foot up and down. 
alleviate any tension in the lower half of your foot as you inhale bring that knee closer to your body you don't have to straighten it if you don't want to again the whole point of the stretch is to raise awareness of your body with each inhale breathe into that tension also keep rocking that foot up and down if you want doing hip circles this should feel really good one last breath in. Now bring both knees into your chest. Grab the inside of your ankles and open your knees out. This is called a happy baby pose. If you can picture a happy baby, its legs are up, it's grabbing its ankles, it's smiling. This is a really great stretch for your spine, your hips, your thighs, your groin everything on the inside of the body. If it's hard for you to grab your ankles, you can just grab the back of the knees. The important thing is that you're opening up those legs as far as you can, that's comfortable, rocking your body back and forth, moving side to side, put a smile on your face like a happy baby, breathing into any tension, Exhale, allowing your body to open up even more. Remember, your breath guides your movement. That is what makes movement medicine. And if you're not happy, you won't be able to move the way you want to. So always come back to the happy baby if you have back pain or tightness. Good, one deep breath, inhale here. Exhale, bring both knees to your chest. Hug the knees in one last time. Cross the right ankle over the left. Grab the back of the knee. Spinal roll up all the way up to sitting. And let's sit facing forward.